Hey guys, in today's micro lecture, we're going to talk about C spine immobilization. Now, when you need to immobilize your patient's C spine due to trauma, there's a number of things you need to take into consideration. Take a look at this image here. This image clearly shows you the cervical spine. It clearly shows that the top vertebrae are called cervical spine. Now, there are generally seven cervical spines, with the two being called also the atlas and axis. Now, when you start moving down this, this row of, of vertebrae, C3, 4, 5 are particularly important because what you can see here uh, is the, the spinal cord that runs through the vertebrae. Now, the, 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 the spinal cord that runs through the vertebrae at this level of C3, 4, 5 houses something called the phrenic nerve. And it's the phrenic nerve that's responsible for respiration. So it's really important that when you have decided as a paramedic that the patient has a potential C-spine injury, that you take into consideration the importance of this, move, this motion and movements that you're going to put, put your patient and the paramedics through. Now, over the years, whether to, um, the choice whether to immobilize or to not immobilize or to the best devices to use to immobilize the C-spine has come into quite a considerable amount of debate and there's still ongoing evidence that is trying to identify the best type of collar, uh, if any at all. Now, just be mindful, there is a growing body of evidence that says that we shouldn't even be putting any collars on our patients next because the patients are well placed to keep their heads nice and still. Um, and I, in fact, the collars, all of the collars that we use today have been shown to provide, to cause some kind of tissue damage or raised into cranial pressure, um, depending on the type of collar used. So let's take a look at two of the most commonly um, type of collar. So the rigid collar and the soft collar. So these are still used in practice today. Let's focus in on this one here. These are still used today in practice. So this is a, a semi-rigid collar. Notice how you've got the, the, the hard plastic part of the collar here. And then you've got the spongy foam. The spongy foam is designed to go around the neck and to be nice and soft on the patient to sit comfortably. Notice also how you've got these different sizes depending on the type of, of length of neck. So the idea is that you measure these collars up with your patient, place it directly around the patient's neck and then secure them at the back. Let's take a look at another type of stiff neck collar. Excuse me, that's not the right page. Uh, stiff neck collar, that's that one. The other one I want to show you is this one here. These ones are also commonly used in paramedic practice. They are adjustable. So you don't have to set the, the, the collar that, that is one size fits all, like the no neck and, and like the, the ones we just showed you. But instead you have this type of device where you, um, you pull this plug out and then you move this up or down depending on the size of the patient's neck. I also want you just to show you the soft collar as well, just very quickly, soft collar immobilization. I wanna show you that one. The reason I want to show you this one is because this one is starting to be used more commonly now, um, particularly in, in some ambulance services rather than others. So this is the, the soft collar. So the idea is that these are not, these are not rigid, they're not hard and they go around the patient's neck in exactly the same way as the hard collar. The difference being is that it's supposed to be soft and cause less tissue pressure, cause less raised intracranial pressure by pressing on the neck here where all the important circulation is. However, as I've said, this is very much a, 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 um, a choice made by the ambulance services. And the idea is that whichever device you use, you're supposed to be keeping that, that, that C-spine nice and straight in neutral alignment. Now you will be getting a chance to practice this in the workshops, but this is a nice introduction to the different types of collars. And please just understand that there is a lot of um, research being done in this space. Thanks guys, thank you very much for your attention. My name is Sam Willis and I look forward to speaking to you again shortly.